This is a cardinal sin for podcasters. Okay. This, I mean, the, if you ask the community, the podcast community is split up and they're divided on this one. On one side, some people say I should be paid. I want to monetize my podcast. I want to grow my podcast. On the other side, you have some people saying, oh, I'm doing it for the love. I'm doing it just because I enjoy doing it. I'm doing it because it's a hobby. So today I want to dive in and give us some tangible application on why we should be paid ultimately for our intellectual property and why we should know our podcast worth. Let's go ahead and get into the in intro. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. What's going on, family? It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show. And I'm excited to be here with you today, as always. And today I want to talk about a topic that Depending on who you ask, they're going to have a different philosophy. They're going to have a different belief. But what I will tell you is this. The majority of podcasters are not making, and this, this, is, a, this is an assumption, but based on just the people I've asked, for one, the majority of podcasters are not being paid to speak. The minority of podcasters, like the Joe Rogans and uh, like uh, the young lady on Call Me Daddy, there are very few individuals who are getting paid from their podcast at a high level, okay? And I wanted to bring this down and break this down to us because think about it like this, okay? You have a job that you do not enjoy doing, okay? You've worked this job for five years, 10 years, and then you go home, and then once you get home, you get to sit there, you get to enjoy recording your podcast, you're engaging with your listeners, and you're like, man, I wish I could do this full time. Man, I wish people would listen to my podcast. Well, the purpose I want to bring to the forefront of that is this, my friend, but you can be able to make money from your podcast, and you can monetize your message indirectly or directly. But this is what I talk about today, because I think it's a cardinal sin when podcasters are not making money from their podcast. We have to, first of all, we have to come to the conclusion of this. You're either entertaining your audience, you're either informing and educating your audience, or you're doing both. All right. And I want to say that because Dr. Dennis Kimbrough talks about the E to E ratio, right? Entertainment versus education. And he says that we typically spend four times the amount of money on, on entertainment than we do on education. And that's relevant here because of the simple fact of this. People listen to podcasts to escape the world. Or they listen to podcasts to get the information that they need to make sound decisions for their day, for their week, for their month, for their fantasy football, whatever it might be. So if you're somebody who's viewed as the level of credibility, like a news anchor, like a sports center host, like a radio personality, I think that gives you some credibility. OK. And understanding that credibility, I believe, can ultimately lead us to getting to a place to where some people might want to give us a tip via buymeacoffee.com. Right. Or they might want to join our Patreon community. These are places and things that we should begin to tap into if we have not considered them as of yet, because if not, we're leaving money on the table. So the first thing we have to understand and make sure that we really get in our mind is that if we're entertaining or if we're educating the audience, the masses, or our target audience, that is worth something, all right? The second thing is this. You're investing so much time, right? For me, I used to... I used to go speak anywhere and everywhere that I could, 
right? This is when I first started speaking. This was before I did the TEDx talks. This is before I really even had the podcast. But I would go to an elementary school, a middle school, a high school, a college, driving all around the city, 45 minutes one way, 45 minutes back. And then I probably would be at the school for a span of two to three hours sometimes speaking for free. And I didn't understand at that time the value of my time, nor did I understand the value of what I was giving them, right? My my friend and I, my fellow colleague speaker, we were going to schools and speaking as guest speakers. And basically, this was giving teachers a free period. This was creating a space and a place to where students could just relax for a little bit. But they pay speakers to come to schools, but we weren't getting checks. So if you're a podcaster who's investing so much time, so much energy, investing so much on equipment and hosting, and you're like, I don't want to make money from my podcast. I don't think that's for me. Well, if that's how you feel, my friend, by all means, please continue to go down that path. However, I think you should be able to find a way, do consults or something, right? Do, do, do some type of consulting, do some type of coaching, do something, all right? Create a physical product. Turn your, turn your listeners into your customers. And then the more you talk to them, the more you ask them questions, the more you want them to engage, and the more they respond back to you, then you'll be able to create something that will fit the need of wherever they are right now in their journey. Write an ebook for them, right? Because your time is valuable and you deserve to be compensated for it. Even though I know half the podcast community doesn't believe the same thing, but it's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own opinions. And then the last one is this. People enjoy your perspective. Have you ever heard this question? Hey, I I, I wanna pick your brain. Like I gotta pick your brain on the, hey John, you mind if I pick your brain? Pick, 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 pick. No, no, okay, no. We gotta start telling people, no, you cannot pick my brain. If you have a question, and then, you know, if you have your website set up through pod page to where people can leave a voicemail, or pod in a box to where people also can leave your voicemail as well there, then have them send in a question that way because when you answer the question, now you're providing value for your target listeners, your target audience, everyone out there, and it's not an isolated answer or an isolated incident. But value your time. Value your voice and value your perspective because obviously... Other people do as well if they're asking you questions because they want to get your perspective and they want to pick your brain, even though I hate that term. I was on a call with a young lady the other day. She's a college student, and I like to speak to colleges and show student athletes how they can leverage podcasts to help them be successful far after they graduate college. And then I was telling her, I said, ooh, I said, don't ever ask me that question again. And I said, you know, you it's not your fault. You you know, you maybe have not known, but I told her that I said, I've invested upwards of 30,000 plus dollars in coaching. And when I hear somebody say, pick my brain, it just insinuates that people want to get something for free. And that's the rub I have with the podcast space, right? People want to get information for free, which I think is great. I'm not against that part. But I'm against it when people want to get the information free on their own terms. They slide in the DM. They try to get sneaky. They don't ask the question in the comments. They don't ask the question in the chat box. They want to ask behind the curtain. Ask the question in front of everybody. More people might have the same question. All right. But family, I wanted to just share that with you. That was on my heart because I believe that the biggest cardinal sin of not even just podcasters, but people in business as a whole, it's doing things for free without a strategy. 
you have to have strategy. You have to put a strategy in place to make sure that you'll be able to benefit just as much as the client on the other side will be able to benefit as well. And that's why, as I always say, I'm, I'm doing, a, uh, doing a training coming up, kicking off, right? Kicking off the new year. We're going to do a training uh, kicking off 2022. You can go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com, getpaidwithpodcasting.com. And there you can go ahead and get signed up for our next training coming up. We got the web, we got the uh, waiting list right now, um, but get signed up. Go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. And family, if you felt that I added value to you in this episode at all whatsoever, then I would encourage you to feel free to uh, go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Jonathan Jones, and you can buy me a coffee, which I really don't drink, but I drink eggnog and I drink cream frappuccino, all right? So you can go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Jonathan Jones, and make sure that wherever you're listening, uh, if it's YouTube, then subscribe to the podcast and leave your comments. Leave your questions. I would love to answer them and I would love to shout you and your podcast out. Okay. Uh, so until next time, family, remember, 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 first of all, say your price, period. And don't budge. All right. All right. Say your price and don't budge because you're informing people, you're educating people, you're investing your time, and people value your perspective. So give, so don't cheat them out of the opportunity to pay for it. All right. Don't cheat them out of the opportunity to pay for it. Until next time, this is the Your Podcast Mentor Show, where I'm here to show you how to establish your platform so you can profit on purpose from your podcast. Until next time, family, peace and God bless. Mm-hmm.